Hey guys, here's the uh, here's the third and final type of chemical bonding that you need to be aware of, especially as we move into our next uh, uh, topic of study, which will be uh, how water is such a valuable uh, molecule to sustaining life. Um, so this third type of chemical bond that you need to know that, that leads us into a discussion about water is known as a hydrogen bond. And we can actually see our previous, sorry, not our previous discussion, but the video lesson about uh, covalent bonds where I first introduced um, the, the concept of water being a polar molecule. And water has that polarity because the oxygen, the, the central oxygen atom in that H2O, in that O, um, uh, has this huge affinity, this huge electronegativity for the electrons that it's attracting the electrons that are being shared such that it becomes negative and the hydrogens become a little bit positive. So let me just, let me just refresh your memory on that a little bit. Um, since we're talking about water, let's go ahead and make this blue and let's just draw an oversimplified water molecule here and say, okay, here is oxygen, here is a covalent bond, here is another covalent bond, here is hydrogen down here, and here is hydrogen down here as well. Now remember, what we said in that uh, video lesson about uh, um, covalent bonds is that uh, because the oxygen has a much bigger size than the hydrogens, it's actually going to attract the electrons toward that oxygen atom in kind of a situation like that. And because that's happening, uh, what will go on uh, up toward the oxygen pole of a water molecule is you will get a slightly negative charge. And what will go on down around by these hydrogens uh, as they start to not give up, but as they start to kind of lose hold of their electrons a little bit, they will start to become slightly positively charged. So that's just one water molecule. We call it a polar molecule because it has a negative end and a positive end, and it all has to do with it uh, starting to, uh, the electrons starting to move closer to that oxygen and a little bit further away from those two hydrogens. Now, this is incredibly significant because it opens the door for us to establish a bond with another molecule. And that's important here because what we've been talking about up to this point are chemical bonds that hold a single compound or a single molecule together. And a hydrogen bond is going to be what we call an inter, uh, intermolecular bond, meaning it is going to not hold one molecule together, but it is going to hold uh, one molecule to a completely different molecule. So let's go ahead and let's uh, actually draw another uh, water molecule in the same vicinity. And I'm gonna draw it in a slightly different configuration. I'm going to draw the oxygen here and we'll make a hydrogen coming off of that oxygen here and we'll make another hydrogen coming off down there. Now this water molecule will have the exact same polarity as, as the previous water molecule that we drew, meaning this oxygen will be slightly negatively charged uh, as it starts to kind of uh, hog those electrons in the covalent bond a little bit more. These hydrogens over here uh, will be slightly positively charged as their electrons spend less time hanging out around them and start to gravitate more toward uh, that oxygen atom. Okay, so we still have that polarity. But what's really, really, really significant is what goes on in between these two molecules. Mm -hmm. So because we have this slightly positively charged hydrogen here, and the slightly negatively charged oxygen on a completely different molecule, kind of like an ionic bond, but really not the same thing because we're not dealing with ions, you have this attraction between a negative and a positive. And it's that attraction right there that is known as a hydrogen bond. These hydrogen bonds, as you're going to see in the lessons to come on water, are what are responsible for water's amazing properties that allow it to sustain life. But it's that bond right there between, I guess if you had to number these, uh, molecule of water number one and molecule of water number two. So it's important for you to understand that we are dealing with this intermolecular bond, meaning it's not holding a single molecule together, but it's actually holding two different molecules even though they're the same, two, two separate molecules, I guess I should say together, because once again, those molecules are polar. And the attraction is taking place